Hey guys, what's up? It's Andrew AJT back for another video for you guys and today we have a very different and very special video. This is going to be a compilation of very old unseen footage from 2014 in OSRS. This is when the game was not even a year old or maybe around a year old. Um, some of these clips are from different times, but these are clips that maybe they were recorded at times where I wasn't making videos too consistently and I just never really got around to putting them into videos. And now it's really it's so interesting to look at them today and see how things have changed in the game and with me as a player as well. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm 1697 total on this. Right now in game I'm 2113 total level so I've definitely improved a lot that way. But the game has changed drastically as well. There was so much different things about this game back then and the gear we're using right now might look like pretty newbie but back then it was pretty much the meta. There was no Zulra, no Serpelm, no Dragon Defender, nothing like that. Uh, there was God Wars. God Wars Dungeon was still pretty new and the drops were worth a lot and you're going to see that in this video. There was no GE in this video. There was no Tentacle Whip I believe either. Um, using the normal whip there as you see uh, my friend here. And uh, yeah, things were so different in the game back then. I'd say the biggest difference in this version of the game that I'm playing right now is the death mechanics. The death mechanics are very safe right now in Old School RuneScape, unfortunately due to DDoSing and such like that. When you die right now, you have an hour to get your stuff back. Back then, in this clip, going to God Wars was a big deal because if you die, your stuff is right there on the ground for everyone to see. If there's someone out there doing a spiritual mages task, they can just run in and pick up your God Sword, whatever your fury, whatever stuff that doesn't get protected. You only protect three items. You don't protect your untradeables, nothing like that. It's all gone on the floor. It's gone. You can come back within two minutes to get it if no one else has already gotten it, but you need the ecumenical key for that. Um, there's a lot really that goes into it, so you're pretty much screwed if you die. So going to God Wars, and Zami especially, was very risky because Zami can hit over a 50, and you could die at any second and really lose a lot of your stuff. And your only hope is that your friend, who's probably not in tank gear, is going to go pick up that stuff for you and trade it back to you. That's really your only hope at all. So we're coming up on our first drop, and remember, this boss was way harder to kill back then. Now we have Ellie, we have all sorts of things. We have Arclight. We didn't have Arclight back then. Stabbing this thing with the Zamrak in Hasta, which was actually a thing back then. Uh, it wasn't just Zami Spear. That came out pretty early. This was a very difficult boss to kill. And yeah, now it's super easy. You can rip right through this thing with Arclight. It's really not difficult at all to kill Zami now. Even solos, you can get like 10 to 15 kills. But back then, it was like an event. You're like, okay, it's Friday night. We're going to Zami. And yeah, even a few years ago, the game was like that. It was not that easy. To do things like this now we have much better gear and look at that zami spear and you think oh my god that's actually not worth that much but holy shit we're freaking the fuck out that's like almost eight mil right there and that's a lot of money back then remember the best gear was like bandos chest plate and all that um so if you get a zami spear that's putting a huge dent in your money making um journey and that looks so nice on the ground again nowadays it's not so much of a big deal to get a z spear but back then that was a very very big deal unfortunately at the end of that trip we both DC'd, likely because of the world, and I teleported and he didn't, he died. And look what I'm saying to him. He's saying, don't worry bro, you'll rebuild. And he's like, yeah, don't worry man, I'll go to Abyssal Demons, I'll get more whips. That was one of the best money makers in the game back then, camping Abyssal Demons for whips, because it was very hard to get 85 Slayer, and very few people had it. Now Abyssal Demons are awful off task, and Necreals and Gargoyles have been buffed to be even better. But back then, that was one of the best money maker methods in the game, was to kill Abyssal Demons. And this is really interesting. This I'm glad I noticed this clip. Look at this guy, you know, asking me, can you do me a favor? Can you clean these herbs? Look at what he's about to trade me. Unidentified herbs. When you used to get herbs back then, you wouldn't know what herb it is. You wouldn't know if it's an irid or a renar. You would just get a herb and it would be unidentified. And you would have to have the herbler level to identify it. And as you're seeing here, um, I can tell which herb it is just by having the herbler level to identify them. But if you're a level one herbler, you wouldn't know what any of these herbs are. So this guy is trading me his stuff, I identify the herbs for him, and now I trade the back. Funny thing is, very, very few people remember will remember this. When the game came out in the very first week, they actually changed the herbs to grimy, and then people got outraged. They said, oh my god, that's not old school, you should put them back as identifieds. So they put them back as identified herbs for around a year, and then people got around to thinking, well, actually, that's really annoying not knowing what herb it is. Can you put grimy herbs back? And the j were like, okay, we'll pull that, and it passed by a landslide. So it's funny how everyone wanted things to be the way they were back in 2007 when the game came out, but now no one really cares anymore, other than maybe me and a few people watching this. 
Also, you may have noticed earlier in that clip that I PM'd a random person saying, hey, are you buying the Hasta? And that's because there was no GE back then. You had to rely on what you're looking at right now and also the Zybez.com marketplace where you have to manually post an offer for what you're selling or buying and you'd have to PM someone manually. And this was a total annoying ass system because if you wanted to buy like a bunch of magic seeds, let's say you're training farming, most people are just selling one at a time. So you could literally spend a whole day and buy like 15 magic seeds. Now you just go to the GE and you buy 200 and you got 99 farming banked or whatnot. It's so much easier now. But this is what we had to do back then. We had to go to Varrock West and uh, yeah, just turn on the auto spammer, which was a good update and sell selling Z has to 8 mil and your JT62, which was my name back then. And uh, yeah, this is what you had to do. You couldn't just go to the GE and, you know, clear out your bank. There was no GE back then. That was just an open field. Eventually, of course, you would find someone. There were a lot of scammers back then. Very little like mindfuck scams, like they would trade you full Varax, but they would trade you like a black plate skirt instead of Varax plate skirt. And it was pretty easy to not pay attention and fall for that stuff back then. That's why you see me being so patient with this trade, making sure, okay, 7.9 mil, not 790k. But eventually it all works out fine and you get your money. A couple other things I've noticed, and we got another Zami drop coming up, but I just want to point out a couple things. Notice that I'm moving the camera here for the most part with the arrow keys. There either was not middle mouse or middle mouse camera movement was very new. I actually use a thumb button on my mouse to move the camera right now. But back then I used the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the camera. Also, one other thing is I'm playing in fixed here. There was only fixed, there was no resizable. And the JMods were saying, no, there's no way we could ever design resizable. That took hundreds of people to design that, but they eventually did. But back then fixed was all you have. And uh, now we have resizable, which I prefer definitely. So we're coming up on another drop here, struggling to get these kills in this old school gear. But look at this. Holy fuck, Staff of the Dead. That is a huge drop back then. That's really one of the better drops you can get in the game at the time. Um, that's like 13 mil at least. And we were flipping the fuck out. Look how excited I am. That's such a big deal back then. Nowadays, it's not a big deal. It's actually worth like the same amount as a Z Spear now. But back then, we were so excited. This was so much money. Um, playing this game and getting a drop like that secured is such a big deal back then. So exciting. And if that drop didn't give me a heart attack already back in 2014, look what's about to happen. We are DCing here right before the boss is going to respawn. Holy shit, this is so bad. If we die here, we lose so much. And the thing about the worlds back then is they would DC, but not everyone would always DC. Sometimes only half the people in the world would DC. And it would leave them wondering whether it was their internet or the worlds, but it was most definitely the worlds. And uh, luckily we did log back in here, no problems, and just going to teleport out right away. I'm not sure if my friend DC'd or not. And um, yeah, you're going to see here, I'm going to wear a ring of wealth. Everything is really designed here to try to stay alive. And you're going to see what I'm risking here in a second if I had died, especially with the Staff of the Dead would have kept an extra item. Um, so we keep the Staff of the Dead, Crystal Shield, and SGS, and we would have lost Zami Spear, Fury, uh, Kirill's Top, Guthan's Worst Spear. That would have been like 25 mil loss. That would have been the worst thing ever. That was the type of deaths that people would quit the game over, like at God Wars Dungeon. Nowadays, that would just never happen. And I just want to slow down and take a look at a couple things I noticed in this footage. Look under my mouse there. There's the Graceful Top and Graceful Hood, completely unrecognizable now. Now they look totally different. Graceful's been redesigned. And looking at the combat tab here for a second, look at how the Slayer Helm is going to look. That looks totally different. And to the left of that, which is on the right, the Graceful Cape, which is also totally different. It's amazing how the icons have changed. Speaking of the Slayer Helm, this is when the Slayer updates were just starting to come into the game. When the game came out, there was no way to skip or block a task other than going to Turiel. There was no streak you could keep. There was no Slayer points. It was so different back then, and now Slayer has become so much faster and easier. But back then, it took a very, very long time. And just to show you, here's me selling the Staff of the Dead. Of course, we have to split this 50-50, but that's 3.2 mil back then. Um, you had to manually type 13, 200, and then 0, 0, 0. There was no 13 mil or whatnot. You had to type it in manually. But yeah, look at that. So satisfying to sell that. I literally waited to the next day to sell it because it took so long to sell items back then but definitely well worth the time. And just another example of how prices were so different back then, here's me buying over 10,000 Dragon Bones for 1,800 coins each, which at the time that was actually very expensive. They were maybe 1,700 each, but on Zybez, if you wanted to buy in bulk, you had to usually pay extra money. 
since then they went up to over 3,000 each. I think they're 2.5k each now or something around there. But yeah, one of my first goals in the game was to get 126 combat, which I actually did in 2014. Definitely getting prior was the most expensive part of that by far. And just before we end this video, I want to show you guys me doing KBD back then. This was before you could even track your kills. There was no kill count or anything like that. There was no pet drops. It was really just killing KBD for the fun of it. And uh, yeah, did you something fun with your friends. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of actually couple things to talk about. The game has changed so much since 2014 in the last four years. And is it too early to be nostalgic like I'm being in this video for something that only happened four years ago. It feels like a lifetime ago, me back in high school, um, you know, playing this game when I got home from school. Of course, I played long since before that. I've been playing since 2005, but even early OSRS feels a little bit nostalgic to me looking back at it. But I do want to list a couple really important updates that have happened since the game came out to show you guys why the game right now might actually still be better than it was back then, even though it's nostalgic to look at this. So a couple examples. For one, when the game came out, the pathfinding was absolutely atrocious. You would click on a monster and you wouldn't attack it until like 10 seconds later because the pathfinding was so bad that you would like dance around the monster and walk under it a hundred times until you finally attacked it. You would never think of these things today, but that was a thing back then. Also, clan chats, when you logged in, you wouldn't automatically rejoin the clan chat that you were last in. You would have to manually retype to join the clan chat, which, of course, 90% of the time you would forget, and I would log in, and there would be, like, two people in my clan chat, and despite all the people in the clan chat being online, it's just because it's so hard to keep remembering every single time you log in or change worlds that you have to change clan chat or rejoin the clan chat. There was also a 40-second delay between changing worlds, now, of course, we have the world switcher. We can change worlds so easily. You couldn't just right-click an Amulet of Glory or any teleport item and go to Edgeville or whatnot. You had to click it, click Rub, and then click your destination. Little things like that were huge. The run energy back then, I do have them in this video, but the little orbs around the minimap, they were not there. You would have to go into your options to turn on your run energy. You'd have to go to your prayer book to do your prayers. There was no quick prayers. You'd have to check your HP in the skills tab when the game came out. Things like that were really annoying back then. There were also no XP drops. There were no achievement diaries. There were no God Wars Dungeon. The clips you saw earlier were pretty close to when the God Wars Dungeon came out, and that's why those items were still expensive. There was no loot broadcasting. There was no middle mouse button for your camera. Things like that. There were no pets. The chat was censored. If you wanted to say a curse word, it would be censored. And you could get reported and get muted for it just because the system would pick it up. Um, there was no grand exchange. That's obviously a huge one. So there have been a lot of improvements to the game since 2014 and 2013, to be honest. Even in this clip, you'll notice that we're hopping worlds after every kill of KBD because back then it took 45 seconds for the KBD to respawn. Imagine that now if you're going for the KBD pet, waiting 45 seconds every single time. That was totally annoying. But for those of you who played back then, I do have a question for you guys. Do you think the game was better then, or do you like it better now? Do you like it now where we have Zolra, all these new skilling methods, three tick fishing, all that? Or do you like it back then when doing KBD with the boys was pretty much the, the thing to do, and it wasn't inefficient or anything, it was just about having fun? I will say that time makes the heart grow fonder a lot. You know, I can see that Staff of the Dead drop and get all excited and all nostalgic, but I probably won't remember the three hours it might have taken to sell it you know, without the G and all that. But I think it is okay to be nostalgic about the old days of old school RuneScape, even though some of the updates may have been necessary for the longevity of the game. Back then in 2014, a peak time for the game would be like 20,000 people playing on a Friday night, whereas now we can get over 80,000 people playing, which is absolutely insane, and it is good for the game to have these updates in some way. But it is okay to be nostalgic about these old times. And we'll close out here with a clip of free-to-play PKing. Free-to-play, of course, was not available when Old School RuneScape came out. It was only members, so when free-to-play came back, it was very exciting, and a lot of people wanted to do PKing really as soon as possible. And this is the very first day of free-to-play coming back into the game, which was really, really exciting at the time. Before we go, I just want to mention, if you guys would like, I was recently interviewed for a video by a YouTuber known as Glink. Some of you guys may have heard of him before. He's made RuneScape videos in the past, although he typically makes, like, internet culture type of videos. Really makes good stuff. If you guys want to check out the video I was interviewed for, it's about the Games Done Quick events, which I've actually attended in the past. I will link that in the description. I think that video turned out really well. 
Otherwise, guys, you can like the video if you enjoyed, and if you'd like to see more type of content like this. I do have some more of these older clips. I'm not quite sure if I have enough for another video of them, but if you guys would like to see more clips like this, some really, really old school, old school RuneScape clips, if you want to call them that, let me know. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the notifications to get a little, you know, click the bell to get a notification whenever I upload. You can also join the clan chat, Andrew AJT 62 that'll be up on screen. You can follow me on Twitter down below. I'll follow you back if you play RS. You can also follow me on Twitch down below and join the Discord down below and support us on Patreon if you really would like to. So thanks so much, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this little old school RuneScape nostalgia trip, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.